Have your Bibles. Have your Bibles. We ask that you come and go with us to the book of Daniel. The Old Testament, the book of Daniel. Book of Daniel, the fifth chapter. I'm going to ask that you keep your Bibles open. Ask that you keep your Bibles open. Um, during this little Easter speech today. Amen. I have some to keep it open because it may be the only time you read it this week. Amen. So keep it open. Book of Daniel, the fifth chapter. A lot of times we'll read third chapter Talk about the Hebrew boys in the sixth chapter, talking about Daniel in the lion's den. And we 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 sometimes omit these other chapters because it's got some good stuff in it and that we need to get into us. If you found it, say amen. amen. Daniel, fifth chapter, beginning at that first verse. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives and concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of the Lord of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes and his wives and concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood and of stone. Verse five says in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to speak to you from a thought today. The handwriting is on the wall. The hand right, the handwriting is on the wall. On the banks of the Euphrates River lies the ruins of one of the greatest cities in antiquity or of the ancient world. Babylon, the city, the capital city of the Babylonian Empire, the Bible begins to talk about it in Genesis, the 10th chapter, in that 10th verse, said that it was built by a man by the name of Nimrod, who was the son of Cush, who was the son of Ham, who was the son of Noah. Babylon in its day was like the New York City of the world today. It was known for its commerce and its trade and, and its great size. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon are one of the seven wonders of the world at that time. It was an impregnable city. People could not get in and out. They could not be conquered, or so they thought. Its walls were 300 feet high. They were also 80 feet wide at the top, and four horse-drawn chariots could ride side by side on the top of the wall. The wall was 60 miles in circumference around the city and there was enough food stored in the city 
that could last for 20 years in case they were sieged on the outside. They got water from the Euphrates River as it ran through the wall. So they were supplied with water. But in Daniel chapter 5, it records the, the fall or the conquering of this once impregnable city. And it had the king at that time by the name of Belshazzar. And we get a little brief introduction of, uh, of Daniel, and, and especially going up to chapter 5. We start out with the king, Nebuchadnezzar. Now, Nebuchadnezzar was that great king who, who came and conquered Jerusalem and, and, and plummaged the, the temple and took all the gold and silver vessels out of the, and he took part of the, of, of the people and the inhabitants of, of Jerusalem and Judah and led them back to Babylonia to try and make them into Chaldeans and enslave them. Now, Nebuchadnezzar is dead now. He, he's long dead. And now his grandson, Belshazzar, is sitting on the throne. Uh, are y'all are with me? And then the third important person that we're going to see in this, in this particular chapter is a man by the name of Daniel. Now, Daniel was the, the young man of God in chapters 1 through 4. But in chapter 5, we find Daniel, an old man of 90 years old, and he is still faithful Serving the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Which shows that that age should not be a barrier for you to faithfully serve the Lord. We, we have a young lady sitting right there, a hundred years old, still faithfully serving the Lord. Amen. Daniel. 90 years old, faithfully serving the Lord. Amen. That, that lets us know that, that this Christian journey is not a, a sprint, but this Christian journey is a marathon. A, a, amen. And when we look at Daniel chapter 5, we can see that Daniel chapter 5 can be broken up into three natural sections. Three natural sections. The first section would be verses one through nine would be a night of excess. And it's a night of partying and drunkenness and, and, and hedonism, which is the pursuit of pleasure or or self-indulgence. And the second section is verses 10 through 29. It's a night of revelation, which means that somebody going to learn something. And then the last section, we can entitle that a night of of judgment, which means that there are going to be some consequences for our behavior. Amen. Let's let's have Bible study today. OK, by the time we finish, let's have Bible study today. By the time we finish, that's why I'm asking you. Keep your Bibles open. By the time we finish, we'll we'll go over all 31 verses uh, uh, of this chapter and then we'll, we'll we can go and we can eat some chicken together. Amen. A amen. So let's look at this first section. Let's take this first section. A night of excess. Verses one through nine. Y'all follow along with me. Verse one says, Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast. The king made a great feast. He was going to have a party. He invited a thousand of his lords. He invited a lot of folks to come in so he can show off what he got. He can show off all of his stuff and and archaeologists have have looked at the palace in which the king had and and the king's palace had a ballroom or it had it had a, a banquet room that could hold up to 10,000 people. So, you know, it was a big room in which he was celebrating and partying in and, and everybody who was anybody was at the party. They had wine. They had women. They had woohoo at the party. And everything that they could do 
To have at that party, to keep it jumping, that's what Belshazzar had. Amen. And then in verses two through four, when all of them were good and drunk, the Bible says that Belshazzar ordered all the sacred vessels that were taken out of the temple in Jerusalem. He told them to bring all the gold and all the silver chalices, bring them out so so they can drink and have 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 merry and just enjoy themselves. And and you have to remember this. I want you to take a note and put a note in here. You have to remember this, that all of these things had been dedicated to the Lord God, Jehovah, back in Jerusalem. Can, 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 can I get a can I get a witness there? Now, let me put a pin there. You better be careful how you handle God's stuff. Anything that's in the house is dedicated to God. And if it's dedicated to God, that means it belongs to God. You better be careful how we handle. I remember when I was growing up, nobody could be in the pulpit. If you wasn't a preacher, you don't touch it. You don't get up here. You don't stand behind this sacred desk because it was consecrated. The communion table, you don't set anything on the communion table. The only thing that goes on the communion table was the Lord's Supper. I wish I had some help in here. Children didn't run all up and down the aisles and stuff because it was sacred to be in the Lord's house. See, y'all getting quiet on me now. Even on the church ground, if if you were a smoker, you didn't smoke on the church ground, but you would go out and stand by the road. If you were a drinker or a smoker, you wouldn't dare do that on the Lord's ground. You would go outside or you would wait till you get home to do it. You wouldn't even curse on the church ground. It was sacred. And now I got a problem with folk. You want to do anything outside of these four walls. And the problem is even inside. Touch your neighbor and tell them, don't mess with God's stuff. stuff. Amen. I know every once in a while, I know every once in a while we have family gatherings and sometimes we might we might want to borrow tables and chairs from the church. But children, I want to let you know that those tables and chairs have been dedicated to the Lord. Not saying that you can't use them, but you better be careful how. Touch your neighbor again. Tell them don't mess with God's stuff. God even says in Psalm 105 and 15, he said, touch not mine anointed. And do my prophets no harm. God is serious about his stuff and you can't handle God's stuff all kind of way. So why did Belshazzar do this? In, in verse four tells us he defied, they defied and disrespected the God of Israel and they praised their gods that were in Babylon. He wanted to show off stuff to show that the God of Israel had no power in Babylon. But I'm so glad that I serve a God that's all powerful. That's everywhere at the same time. That's that's all knowing because verses five and six says that God interfered with the party. The Bible says that while they were good and drunk, while they, they were sloppy drunk, the Bible says that all of a sudden a hand appeared. over there by the candlestick and start writing on the wall. 
And when the hand appeared and started writing on the wall, the Bible says that all of them noticed it, especially the king. Are, are, are y'all with me? Verse 6 tells us that the king's facial expression changed. His countenance changed. He got, he got white as a sheet. And it says that his waist became, that this joints, the hip joints became un unloosed, which means that he lost control of his bodily fluids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! He was so scared <laughs> that he couldn't keep himself. And it said that his knees were knocking together. That's what the Bible says said his knees were knocking together. It scared him just that much. And verses 7 through 9 said that that mysterious hand wrote on the wall, but nobody could read what it was writing. And the king called for the wise men, come and read this right here. And the wise men came and, and they couldn't read the handwriting that was on the wall. Paul said to us in 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. In other words, a message from God can only be read by a man of God. And when I say a man of God, I'm talking about I'm talking about male and female. Somebody who has been endowed with the Holy Spirit can only discern spiritually the things of God. But I tell you this, Belshazzar didn't know one thing. He knew that that party was over. Whenever you get in your groove on and then something happened that shouldn't be there, that party is over. I remember my club days where you can be you can be just getting back, enjoying yourself. Then all it took was one gunshot. Uh oh, time to go. They were having a good time before this hand party is over. Amen. This brings us up to our next outline. Verses 10 through 29. No one could read the handwriting on the wall. So we want to call this a night of revelation. Somebody going to learn something. Verses 10 through 12 says that now the party was shaken up. It was interfered with by God. The queen, who was probably Belshazzar's mother, came out and said that I recall that there was a man in your granddaddy's kingdom who was spiritually endowed with the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Are, are, are y'all with me in here? Let me say this again. A message from God can only be read by a man of God. Spiritual matters must be dealt with by spiritual men. That's why any and everybody can't handle the communion. Woo. That's why you can't ask everybody to do something in the Lord's house. Y'all ain't going to talk to me today. A -a -a Amen. There's somebody that I know he's got the spirit of the Holy God in him. Maybe you can ask him. Verse 13 through 17. So the king sent for Daniel. And when Daniel got to the party, he saw all the wise men, all the astrologers. He saw the sorcerers. He saw the root workers. He saw all those folks that can read the palm in your hand. He saw all those folks that give out dust and stuff. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Who could not read what was on the wall. And now Daniel came in and he found everybody else at the party, but he didn't go. And when Daniel got to the party, the king looked at him and said, look, I've heard about you. 
I heard that you were wise. I heard that you can you can do certain things that other folk can't do. I heard about you. He said, now, if you can read the handwriting that's on the wall. He said, I will reward you handsomely. I will dress you in scarlet and I'll put a big old gold chain around your neck. Have him looking like a rapper. <laughs> and I will make you third ruler of all Babylon. But that's a pretty good price. But Daniel said, keep your money. Keep your money. I'm going to tell you what it says for free. These, these charlatan faith healers and a lot of these televangelists that we have today that's always saying, give me, give me, give me, and got their tricks and stuff. Come on and send me $39 and you can get this pack of miracle spring water. I'll send you a prayer cloth for your donation of $14.95. The word of God is free. Not only the word of God is free, you don't have enough money to buy a real man of God. And you say, keep your money, keep your stuff, King. keep your stuff to yourself. I don't want it. I'm going to do this job for free for you because I already know what it says. Now, watch this. Watch this. I said it's a night of revelation. Somebody going to learn something. So if somebody going to learn something, that meant somebody got to go to school. So Daniel is now going to take the king to school. Daniel is going to be the teacher and Belshazzar is going to be a student. Are y'all with me? The first class that Daniel took Belshazzar to was history. Look at verses 18 through 21. Daniel gives Belshazzar a history lesson. Let's, let's read it together. Look at, look, at, look at 18 through 21. 18 through 21. Look at it. It says, O thy king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor and for the majesty that he gave him all people all nations and languages trembled and feared before him whom he would he slew whom he would he kept alive and whom he would he set up and whom he would he put down but when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beast and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the most high God ruled the kingdom of men and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. In other words, Daniel took him to school and told him this is your history but you still hadn't learned your lesson he said since you didn't learn your lesson you get an F in history alright he wasn't through with him yet still taking him to school the next subject was theology look at verses 22 and 23 Verses 22 and 23. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. You knew this. You knew the history. You knew what God could do. But look at verse 23. But thou hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. And they have brought the vessels of his house before thee. And thou and thy lords and thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them. And thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold and brass, iron, wood and of stone, which see not, hear not, know not. And the God in whose hand thy breath is and whose are all thy ways hast thou not glorified. Because you have not recognized the true and living God, you get an F in theology. That's two classes he got an F in. 
I don't know about you, but when I was in when I was when I was an administrator or teacher, you failed two subjects. You failed for the year. But Daniel wasn't through taking him to school yet. He next gave him a spelling lesson. Look at verses 24 and 25. When he said, then was the part of the hand sent from him and this writing is written. And this is the writing that was written. Mene, mene, tikel, you All right, he looked at that and saw what was up there. Daniel explained to him what this was. First of all, when we see mene, M-E-N-E, it means to be numbered. Then tikel, T-E-K-E-L, it means to be weighed on a scale or in a balance. And then you or Perez means divided. A amen. He said, now that's the spelling lesson. Since you didn't understand it and you couldn't read it, that's your spelling lesson. And you get an F in that also. Uh, are y'all with me? He's failed three subjects already when Daniel taking him to school. And the fourth and final subject was math or as older folks would say, arithmetic. Look at verses 26 through 28. Daniel said, this is the interpretation of the thing. Mene means God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balance and art found wanting. Perez, or Euphorsin, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Now, Daniel said this. This is the math lesson. First of all, Belshazzar, God has your number. And your number is up. Right, Secondly, Belshazzar, God has weighed you and you don't measure up. Oh. And thirdly, Belshazzar, God has divided your kingdom and taken it away from you. And since you don't understand the numbers, you failed mass. That's the handwriting on the wall. And after Daniel told him all this, it seemed like some people would learn their lesson. But this joker still didn't get it. Because when Daniel explained what it meant, this clown said, bring that man some red suit. <laughs> bring, him his, bring him his gold chain. He still did not get it, even though the handwriting He was a dead man walking. And he still didn't understand. The handwriting was clear on the wall. And, and even today, it's so clear and plain and folks still don't get it. The writing is there. God's men and women are instructing on what the message is saying, but yet still. Men don't get it. And it's the same message that's been written on the wall for over 2000 years. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. The same message, but still, folks aren't getting it. Look at the final chapter, of the final section of this chapter. Verses 30 31. A night of judgment. There are going to be consequences to our behavior. Look at verse 30. In that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. You just received a message that your time is up. And in that night, that same night, with all the partying and stuff, and God done wrote your message on the board, on the, on the wall, he got killed. The Medes and the Persians had come in and penetrated an impregnable wall because it was all in God's plan. Watch this. 
The king thought that he may have lived, may have gone to live forever, but God had other plans. So the thesis of this whole chapter, the thesis of this whole chapter is the wages of sin is death. You're going to be held accountable for your behavior. Can, 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 I get, can I get a witness in here? You're going to be held accountable. You got to give an account for how you live your life because the handwriting is on the wall. God has given us all the ability to either read it or hear what the message is saying, and the message is still the same. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. But I'm glad that if there's a thesis of the chapter, there's also an antithesis. And the antithesis, an antithesis is, see these kids in school know, an antithesis is something that means the direct opposite of something else. So if the thesis of chapter 5 of Daniel is the wages of sin is death, then the antithesis of chapter 5 is but the gift of God <laughs> is eternal life. Jesus told me to tell you today that you better take heed of the thesis and the antithesis because the handwriting is on the wall. Jesus says in the book you'll find that I came down through 42 generations. I wrapped myself up in the flesh of men. I was born in a town called Bethlehem. I grew up in the way of the Lord. I was raised by my God-given parents, Mary and Joseph. The Bible says that at 30 years old, he was baptized in a river called Jordan. And when he came up out of the river, the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. And the heavens opened up. And God said that this is my beloved son. In whom I'm well pleased. Ain't my Lord all right? I heard that same Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted of Satan three times. He defeated Satan with the word of the Lord. Ain't the Lord all right? He came out of that wilderness with power in his hand. Power to give sight to blind eyes. Power to make deaf ears to hear again. Power to make lame legs walk again. Power to heal the sick. And power to raise the dead. Ain't my Lord all right? I heard that he stayed here for 33 and a half years. And I heard one Friday night, early one Friday morning, they put an old rugged cross on his back. Marched him up a hill called Golgotha. It was all written on the wall. They put nails in his hands, put nails in his feet. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. He died, he died, y'all, till the sun refused to shine. He died till the moon dripped in blood. He died. Till the earth reeled and rocked like a drunken man. I heard that they took my Savior down and they put him in a borrowed tomb. 
stayed there Friday night. Uh, Stay there all day Saturday. Uh, Stay there all night Saturday night. Uh, But early, early, early on Sunday morning, my Lord and my Savior, he got up with all power in his hands. Say yes. Say yes. I stopped by to tell somebody today that the handwriting is on the wall. When you stand before Jesus, there'll be no excuse for the handwriting is on the wall. I don't know about you tonight, but I'm going to read my letter. And when I stand before Jesus, I want to hear him say, well done. 